Hey everyone, last summer I collaborated with several other amazing YouTube food creators around this box. This is the 1971 Betty Crocker recipe card library. To commemorate the one year anniversary of our collaboration, all of us decided to get together and do it again. Happy Bettyversary, everyone. Happy Bettyversary. Happy Bettyversary. Happy Bettyversary. Happy Bettyversary. Today, I'm going to be preparing coconut chews. What's everybody else making? I'm making pizza with a hamburger crust. I'm making raspberry ring with creamy fruit. I'm making oven porcupines. We're making oatmeal squares. Be right back. Last year, I made a chocolate butter mallow cake and it was stressful. <laughs> I was still very new to making videos, but that cake was absolutely delicious, and I can only hope that these coconut chews turn out just as yummy. Betty describes these cookies as chewy and rich with a brown buttery crust. Good keepers too. I'm glad they're good keepers because this makes 32 bars. <laughs> Heat oven to 350, which I have done. Cream shortening and confectioner sugar. So this recipe calls for shortening and it says to use butter for part of it as well. So I have some shortening here. It is kind of a hot day today. Not ideal for baking, but ideal for measuring shortening because it is very soft. And I have some butter. Then my confectioner sugar. Set that off to the side. Oh, my butter's not soft enough. <laughs> This can't be going wrong already. I just started. <laughs> Blend in one and a half cups of flour. Powdered sugar everywhere. It's very crumbly. I'm hoping that's what it's supposed to be. Betty doesn't say. She doesn't often give the most detailed instructions on these recipe cards. It's pretty sandy. Press mixture in bottom of ungreased nine by 13 baking pan. It says ungreased. I'm really hoping these will come out very easily. There we have it. So now I have to bake this for 12 to 15 minutes. Speaking of not very detailed instructions, the rest of this recipe is mostly mixed remaining ingredients. <laughs> Brown sugar, eggs that I will not be cracking on my Pyrex. We've got our two tablespoons of flour, baking soda and salt, half a teaspoon of vanilla. There we are. We've got chopped walnuts, flaked coconut, the star of the show, coconut, appears in the name, so I'm gonna say coconut is the star. Here we go. Here's what the crust looks like just out of the oven. It definitely reminds me of like a pie crust. Actually, it looks a lot like the pie crust mix that I used to make the peach double deckers. It said that you're supposed to pour this on while the crust is still hot, so let's go ahead and do that. Yes, I think this is gonna be delicious. It smells so good. I'm ready to try these. I mean, I have a while yet. So now that we've put our brown sugar mixture on top of the crust, it goes back in the oven for about 20 minutes. I have a few minutes left for the bake time on this layer, so I thought, why not make the icing? I'm supposed to combine confectioner sugar, which I got all over the place while I was measuring it, as usual. Two tablespoons of melted butter, three tablespoons of orange juice, a teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm just gonna squeeze a little from here. Oh, <laughs> no. And mix that together. I think that looks nice and smooth. I gotta say I'm very curious about this combination of like orange and lemon with this brown sugar coconut. It could be really good. I don't know though. Just It just sounds like an unusual mix of flavors. Will you take a look at that? These have been cooling for a few minutes. You know, they're not ready to eat yet, but I think it's safe to top them with the icing. That lovely citrusy icing that I made. And it's just gonna melt, isn't it? It's just gonna melt. <laughs> this isn't like a buttercream frosting anyway. It's kind of almost more like a glaze. What does it look like on here? It's like a pretty thin layer. Looking good. However, they are still pretty hot, so they're really not ready to cut. I'll pick this up for a taste test a little bit later. How did I do? You see that? A couple of notes. Yes, I do have notes for Betty Crocker. These definitely cut a little bit more easily after some fridge time. I tried to cut them yesterday after they'd cooled down from the oven and they were just a crumbly mess. Fridge time really, really helped. I made them about two inches by three inches. After rereading the recipe card, Betty says you're supposed to cut these three inches by one inch. 
I just don't think they have the structural integrity to withstand that. <laughs> I think they would be too skinny and they'd just fall right apart. This seems like a better size anyway. It's a little bit more of a bar cookie size than I'm used to. You know, maybe it would be more elegant to cut them in smaller pieces, but people are probably gonna eat more than one anyway. Why not make them this size? They smelled wonderful while they were baking. Caramely brown sugar, just really, really great. So I think that bodes well for the taste, at least I hope so. Moment of truth. Mmm, those are very good. They're very sweet. Maybe Betty was right about cutting them a little bit smaller. They have a bit of a fall flavor to them, probably from the brown sugar, but we have this like very rich, like buttery crust. I think using at least part butter was a smart move. You could probably go with all butter instead of butter and shortening, and it might come out even a little bit more tasty. But the filling is really good. It's just the right amount of filling. You wouldn't want more than that. And then this orange lemon icing, like it doesn't taste overly citrusy. It just tastes like fresh and sweet. I think it's a really good compliment to the bars. So this one is a keeper. I'm just noticing this is come for coffee, but then there's also some knitting in the background. So, you know, maybe you could take this to your craft circle. A huge thank you to Jim from Jim's Kitch Kitchen, Melinda from Unboxing Betty, Stephanie from Ginger Snap Kitchen, and Michael from Myco. I love collaborating with all of you and I love being part of this community. Be sure to go to their channels and check out their videos to see how their recipe cards turned out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every single week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.